Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be doing destruction physics in Blender. Uh, we're going to be ending up with this. So if you're interested in making that, then stick around and I'll show you how. So we're going to be leaving this cube in. Uh, we just need to bring it up a bit so that it can fall down. So we're going to be pressing G, Z, bring it up on the Z axis. Uh, somewhere about there is all right. Then we can bring in a plane, pressing Shift A, under mesh, un under mesh uh, plane. Scale it up a bit by pressing S. Uh, we need to add a solidify to this plane so that when the object, when the cube falls down, it, it lands nicely on it and doesn't pass through at all. Um, because currently this plane is infinitely thin and collisions, uh, simulations, collisions, things like that, don't like dealing with infinitely thin surfaces. So we need to give it some thickness. To do that, we click our plane, go to the modify tab, I'm going to make this a bit bigger and set it to solidify. This gives it a bit of thickness, but let's give it a little bit more just like that and apply it. Now we can give our plane and our cube um, some rig rigid body physics. So click our cube and under physics properties, select rigid body. Um, it's already set to active, so that means it falls. However, it passes through the plane. So we need to set our plane to rigid body as well. Click rigid body and passive so that it doesn't fall down and the cube just lands on top of it, just like this. Perfect. Okay, so that's our basic simulation. But what we want to happen is this cube to fall down and as it hits the floor, it breaks up into lots of pieces. To achieve this, we're going to be using a thing called the cell fracture. It's an add-on, um, so if you don't have it, you need to come up here to Edit, Preferences, and under Add-ons, search for Cell Fracture, and if it's not enabled, enable it, and it should be good to go. This basically allows us, uh, it's an add-on for Blender that allows us to break up um, objects into lots of different pieces. So. To do that, I'm going to be using a thing called the uh, annotation pencil. Basically, we're going to draw on some cracks onto the cube. The annotation pencil is this tool right here, and it allows us to just draw around, squiggle in space. Um, but to get it to stick to the cube, we need to change it from a 3D cursor up here to surface. Now it will stick to any surface we draw it onto. Um, just to make it easier for myself, I'm going to set the plane to be invisible for now, just so we can draw some cracks onto the cube. We don't need to be too kind of specific with this, um, but I'm going to draw lots on the bottom, just all over the place. It doesn't really matter. And then fewer as we go higher up, as there's less kind of cracks going on. So literally just draw all these cracks onto the cube. Don't think about it too much. Just like that. I think that'll be fine. Now we need to use the cell fracture that will look at these lines and make cracks from these. Okay, so with the uh, with the cube selected, press F3, and that brings up a search. Uh, I've already searched for it, but if you literally type in cell fracture, it's just there. Click it, and it brings up this panel. Uh, let me just check if that is being recorded. Okay, it is. All right, so this brings up this panel. Um, at the moment it sets own particles, but we need to set it to annotation pencil because that's what we're using. And the source limit is how many pieces, the maximum amount of pieces uh, it will create. Uh, I like to set this to something a bit higher, uh, maybe 150, 200. I'll set it to 200 just so we have lots of pieces. The recursion, set it to one. And the scene collection, uh, we definitely want. I'm going to name it pieces. This will basically make a uh, a new collection full of the pieces so there's not loads of different objects filling up your scene. Okay, so once that's all done, uh, we're good to go. You can click OK. And it will make all of these different shards of the cube. And it will put them all into their own collection as well. Okay, now that that's done, you should have bunch of, of pieces all in this all in this folder all in this collection uh, if we invisible the cube you can see the cube's been broken up uh, and if we 
come up here to note you can set the annotation pencil to be invisible because we don't really need it anymore you can switch back to this little i don't know what this is little arrow thing um <laughs> right so now okay this is what we have at the moment we have a plane uh and we have our cube and it falls down and it lands but these shards just stay up here we need we need them to fall down too okay so let's 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 say we want to make one of these shards also be a rigid body um we can come over here rigid body um and what happens well, it, it interacts with the cube we don't we don't want that uh we want we want our oh my god <laughs> we want our uh cube not to interact with these okay uh, you might be thinking well why don't we just make this just you know all fall down and then break up on the floor well if we do that you can you can see these cracks these cracks are all very visible um in in like in rendered view and thing you can see them there so we need what we need to do this is what we're going to do we're going to have the cube the original cube here fall down as it does well now it's interacting so i need to quickly select this one set it to not be rigid body anymore there you go so this will fall down and land on the surface we need it not to interact with these other shards okay so what we're going to have is this cube falling down and as it hits the floor it's going to disappear and these will appear okay so it's going to be two separate simulations but to start off with um i'm going to do something i'm going to i'm going to give this cube its own kind of weight um set it to like concrete or something we can do that by coming up to here to object rigid body um and calculate mass let's set it to let's set it to concrete yeah that's right here so now it falls and acts like concrete okay um we we need to make it so it doesn't interact with these other elements because we want these to be rigid body too but we saw when they are rigid body it all collides so to solve this we need to turn we need to bake this movement this animation into keyframes so it's pretty easy to do let's just see where it lands okay it stops moving around frame 21 frame frame 21 let's say so come to object rigid body bake to keyframes and set the end frame to yeah 21 and that will remove the rigid body element but it will also still move because it's now a cube that doesn't interact so now when we make one of these shards a rigid body it falls that's perfect okay so we can invisible this cube for now what we need to do now is make all of these pieces fall down together not just this single one so with this original piece we've given the rigid body element selected we can right click on the collection of pieces and click select objects okay now you can see this one we originally had is selected orange and these are all a darker kind of orange okay this is our active piece so when we come to object rigid body we can see um copy from active there it is that will mean that every single piece will be rigid body okay so now it all falls together unfortunately uh, they're not concrete so we need to come to object rigid body calculate mass where is it there it is concrete perfect they all fall and act as, and act as uh, uh, concrete now. So if we can have a look at our cube, it falls with them. But we need the cube to disappear. We don't want the cube there. And we also want these shards not to be there while it's falling. So we need to keyframe its visibility. Let's first do it with the cube. So let's invisible our pieces and find out just where this cube hits the floor. Okay, so come along here and around frame 20 it seems to hit the floor okay so frame 19 we want it to to be the last point is visible so if we click our cube at frame 19 we can come to its object settings here 
and under visibility, we can determine, we can keyframe whether it's in uh, uh, viewable in the viewport and the renders. So we want it to be viewable at frame 19. So we can keyframe that. And then if we come along to frame 20, we don't want it to be viewable, we want it to disappear. So click these, uh, unselect these and mark that as keyframed. So now we can see, I mean, I can't see the keyframes, but I don't know why, but hey, whatever, it works. So it falls and disappears. Now we need to do the inverse for the pieces. So it falls, disappears at frame 20. So at frame 19 is the last point that these pieces are invisible, okay? So let's let's go back to here and find just one piece, just one piece. Um, let's do this corner one here, big piece. We want it to be um, visible, uh, invisible at frame 19. So let's make it invis uh, uh, invisible here and keyframe it. We then want it to be visible at frame 20. Just like that. So check marked and keyframed. So now, perfect. When the cube's here, that piece isn't. When the when the cube's gone, that piece is there. Okay. But the, the way we need to get it to act on all of these is by linking. So with this piece that we've keyframed selected, we need to do control L and that does make links. All right. First, I forgot, <laughs> we need to have this piece selected and right click on the pieces. Select objects, just like this. Control L and animation data. That basically links the animation data that we've made uh, down here um, like this. So now that as that disappears, the shards appear. Okay, so if we go back to the beginning of our simulation and play it, it works perfectly. The The cubes fall down, uh, the cube falls down, and as it hits the floor at frame 19, it turns into the pieces. And that's exactly what we wanted. So we've ended up with a quite convincing uh, rigid body physics, destruction physics. So let's make the plane a bit bigger. I'm gonna have a look through my camera and just begin setting up the scene. So it kind of breaks up here. Okay, let's bring the camera up a bit. So it falls down, breaks up. Nice, that's good. Okay, let's come to rendered view and we can start to kind of render this thing out. I'm not gonna put too much thought into it, but the good thing about cell fracture is that these individual pieces will retain the same material as our cube. So if we give our cube a certain material over here, let's say we make it green, these pieces will remain green as well. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna give it a nice pastel kind of color, something like that, and I'm gonna make the floor a kind of red. No, that's horrible, black, that's fine. And I'll make it rough as well. So this is what we end up with. Oh, brilliant. Now it's not working. There you go. You have to come back to frame one. That's why. Because it has to render it all out. And this is what we've got. That's looking nice. I like that. I like the colors as well. So there you go. That's, um, that's how to make uh, rigid body physics. Um, if you enjoyed it, leave a like. Um, if you want to see more tutorials from me, then subscribe. Uh, yeah, I, I, my recent fire simulation video kind of blew up, got more view, far more views and attention uh, and support than I was ever expecting. So uh, that's really nice to see. Uh, so thank you guys for all the likes on that video. Um, and if you're new around here, hello, welcome to the channel. Um, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. If you've learned something, let me know. Any questions, uh, let me know. Any tips, let me know. Um, but yeah, um, see you in the next one.
拜。